So what happens when we have a leaky brain is this entire cascade of things can begin to happen. So neurologically speaking, we develop a host of different types of problems when we have a leaky brain, or at least we, we, we increase the risk for developing these problems. And you see here migraine headaches, epilepsy or seizure disorder. So why is this important? Many of you go to your doctor, right? You've been told you have epilepsy. You've been told you have a seizure disorder. Um, you've been diagnosed with a migraine headache. Some of you go to your doctor, you've been diagnosed with depression or anxiety. Uh, I see this a lot. Um, you're dizzy all the time and you don't know why, so they call it vertigo or ataxia. Some of you have got a diagnosis you know, of, of, of mental disorder like schizophrenia. I talked last week about attention deficit disorder, attention hyper, hyperactivity, attention deficit hyperactivity, and autism we talked a little bit about last week. Facial palsies, another one. So, so conditions like Bell's palsy where your facial, uh, your facial control starts to droop. Multiple sclerosis and ALS or Lou Gehrig's disease. Uh, if you remember a number of years ago, those ice bucket challenges, that was you know, for Lou Gehrig's disease. These are demyelinating conditions, right? And then neuropathy. A lot of you don't, you know, you may not have one of these major systemic diseases, but you have nerve pain. Uh, you have numbness and tingling in your hands and feet, right? Um, and then something called complex regional pain syndrome, um, which is a very, very intense type of pain. It, it, it's oftentimes also referred to as reflex sympathetic dystrophy. So if you've had either one of those diagnoses, look, these are the neurological manifestations uh, of leaky brain, right? And one of the things that we absolutely are sure can cause leaky gut to leaky brain is exposure to gluten. As a matter of fact, um, we know that gluten exposure to even people that are not celiac, so there's a, a term you've heard me use a number of times, non-celiac gluten sensitivity. So even if you don't have celiac disease, we know that gluten can still cause leaky gut, leading to, again, the neurological manifestations. And that's, you know, some doctors and researchers believe that gluten by itself is a neurotoxin, um, and, and they're right. But one of the things we've also identified is there's a, a, um, there's a, a, a type of antibody that once we're exposed to gluten, our immune system looks at that gluten as an enemy, and it starts to overreact, and it starts to produce an antibody to nerve tissue. And so this is one of the meth mechanisms of action in which gluten can actually create neurological damage. So, you know, these are all things, interestingly enough, these are all things that can be measured. Unfortunately, most doctors won't spend a whole lot of time uh, measuring these things. They, they like to give you a name, right? They give you the name, you have migraine headache, you have epilepsy, you have depression. And, and raise your hand if you're watching tonight, if, you went, if you've gone to your doctor and, uh, and you struggled with any of these conditions and your doctor said, here's your diagnosis, we don't know what causes it, um, and then proceeded to write your prescription for some type of medication, even though they didn't know what caused it. If you've had that happen to you, I'd like you to just chime in and share with us tonight. Because it's very, very common. I see it all the time. People are told you have a disease. We don't know why, but we know how to solve it. Here's the drug. That makes no sense. Giving the drug when we don't know what causes it doesn't really fix you. It masks the problem. And if it's a neurological problem, the danger there, especially when you have neuropathy, um, remember nerves are slow to heal. So if you mask your neurological pain with a medicine, and you know, common medicines that, that are given for this, um, oftentimes anti-inflammatories, steroids are commonly given, drugs like gabapentin, um, which is oftentimes used for neurological pain, you know, and, and I've even seen the you know, oxycodone and some of the bigger heavy, heavy hitter opiates be prescribed for neurological pain. But nerves are slow to heal, and so if you have nerve damage, you wanna find out why, you wanna get to the why, as quickly as possible, because if you mask the damage, you have, you know, you, let's say you're on a medicine for multiple years, now you've got additional years of damage that are compiling. And so when you finally get around to making the decision that you're gonna get to the why, you've lost several years 
uh, to damage. And on top of losing those several years, it takes a very long time for nerves to heal. So a lot of people, when they, when they start getting to this, when they start figuring this out and then they take action, like a gluten-free diet or, or you know, correcting nutritional deficiencies or whatever else might be contributing to that nerve damage, it takes longer, right? So it takes longer. And we live in this world today, unfortunately, where people want what they wanted yesterday, right? Most people are impatient. They don't understand the concept of healing. And nerves just heal more slowly than other tissue. So if you're starting to manifest neurological problems, the most important thing that you can do is get to the why as quickly as you possibly can so as not to allow for years of damage to occur repetitively over time. But again, I just want to reemphasize every single condition that you see on the board here, every single one has been linked um, clinically, anecdotally, as well as in medical research to gluten exposure. We know gluten can contribute to these illnesses. So if you've got any one of these diagnoses, if you've got a family member with any one of these diagnoses, if you've got a friend or loved one with any one of these diagnoses, you need to share this information with them because it has the potential to save them from years of grief. I mean, I, I, can, I can just speak of a, a couple of really major experiences that I've seen. Um, I had a woman one time uh, in a wheelchair uh, diagnosed with MS, multiple sclerosis, came to see me. We, got, we were able to get her out of her wheelchair. I mean, many of you may have heard of, of Dr. Terry Walls, who, uh, who, who runs a, a foundation for MS patients. Um, she was actually wheelchair, wheel, wheelchaired as well, and through diet change and lifestyle change, was able to walk and, and live and enjoy life again. So I know oftentimes diseases like MS can be very scary because the diagnosis seems like it's a life sentence to to torment and torture and, and, uh, and, and hopelessness. But I want you to, to take heart that if you have a neurological di diagnosis, then you really want to explore gluten as a major contributing factor here. Hey, don't forget to check out the rest of the series right here. Make sure you hit subscribe below. And as always, thanks for tuning in.